The Central Bank of the United States was founded in 1913. Guess what else was founded in 1913? Tax uh, department. Yeah. And so when you look at all this and then you can read Marx, he says that a progressive income tax is necessary for the spread of communism. And then when they cut off the Keystone XL pipeline, inflation went through the roof. Now the poor are already poor, but when you raise inflation, the price of fuel, the middle class got poor. And now when I shop, I look around and I go, the retailers, everything's on sale. I can't help myself. But I feel for the retailers right now because the customers are going broke. So yeah. is the intent evil? I suspected it was going to get bad. You know, most of my books, I cannot say what I want to say. I said, this is, we're going to crash big time. Yeah. In 2008, damn right it crashed. And we're still crashing today. Dalio says we're now in a depression. So that's why I speak what I said. And so at Freedom Fest, even I got censored there. So what's happening to America? So we're here with Mark Moss. I mean, he did a report on this guy named Klaus Schwab, which I've only heard rumors about. So that's why this program is a very important show to find out what's going on. What's happened with the income inequality, the obesity rate, the incarceration rate, the divorce rate, the medium income, debt levels, everything since 1971. Why since 1971? It's the year we got off the gold standard. So you can see it's a hundred charts that show what the WTF happened in 1971. And you can see it's just like crazy. And the reason why I start with that is because when was the World Economic Forum founded? And so the whole world went off the rails in 1971. When you distort the money, you get all types of distortions. And one of those is seen like a WEF. It was in 1972, I realized what had happened. Mm -hmm. I was flying in Vietnam, and that's when I went on the gold standard. And I bought my first little Kruger in in uh, Hong Kong for about 50 bucks. A lot of people might have heard of something like Davos, where every year the world leaders, a lot of people call them the world elite. I don't like to use that word. They're not elite in anything. None of us would hire them in our business, but the world leaders, the policy makers, if you will, the think tankers, they get together every year in Davos. And so you hear like the Davos man in reference or something. What their policy is, is this a public-private partnership. It's okay. politicians okay. and business people getting together, public and private, getting together to set policy. So they get together every year in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum. And so it was founded by this guy, Klaus Schwab, and uh, he's created this think tank, bringing these people together to try to figure out a better way, a more equitable way to run the world. Watch out. Anytime you see that word equitable, you know what they're talking about. They're talking about Marxism. And so what really what he's done is he's just taken the same ideas. You said we haven't seen this before, but of course we have. It's the same idea is being rehashed globally. globally. And so it's just Marxism all over. So they get the world leaders together, the politicians, the public and the private, and they come together in what he's calling stakeholder capitalism stakeholder capitalism. So instead of, uh, we talked about last night at dinner, how Rothbard said that businesses should focus on profit. He says, no, no, business shouldn't focus on profit. Business should focus on the community, ESG, environmental, social governance. We should be equitable. And so basically distorted all these things, but they want to do it through power, through control, forcing people to comply instead of educating people and showing people better ways. And so they've done it through the public private partnership. So basically through the money. So now if you don't fall in line with what their policies are, no money for you, no investment for you, right? And if these big companies don't follow along with their policies and push these things down, they don't get the funding and then they basically get pushed out of the city. And so for the last 12 years, I've studied the macro. I learned a concept called uh, wealth transfers. Money doesn't disappear, it transfers. And so when I lost my wealth, somebody else got that. I didn't like that. That's a very good point. <laughs> and it's happening today. And so I realized there's certain times and conditions where these wealth transfers happen. And so I've spent the last 12 years studying these wealth transfers to figure out how do I get on the receiving end instead of being on the receiving end of those things. I reference quite often what Henry Kissinger said, which was maybe a warning to the world, but I think it was more of a call to arms on their side. So he said, if you control the food, you control the people. If you control the energy, you control the continent. If you control the money, you control the world. Let's back up. A lot of people don't know who Kissinger was. Oh, he's still around. So he's Secretary of State, right? For Nixon. Yeah. He opened the door to China. But also instrumental throughout Europe as well during that time of the coming out of the World War II, kind of redrawing the world and setting peace and stuff like that. So he was very influential and he still is today. What are the attack vectors today? So food, <laughs> we're running out of food. Per the UN, I think it's 868 million people could starve to death in the next 24 months. Well, you look at what's happening in Sri Lanka today. Yeah. Do you know, there's rioting going on and all this because... It's corruption and yeah. basic corruption is what it is, but they're starving. Yeah, they're starving. And the Ukraine is going to starve a lot of people. They're starving and they have no energy. <laughs> Sri Lanka has the best ESG score in the world, 98 at 100. <laughs> they had put out an article two years ago said that by 2025, they were going to be one of the richest nations. They were going to be the poster child for ESG, uh, how environmentally sound you are, low impact <sighs> on environment, your social score, and then your governance. You have diversity on your board and all of these things. They were going to be the poster child for this. They proclaimed that we will be the best by 2025. They said by 2025, we'll be one of the richest nations in the world based off of this sustainability. Sri Lanka coming to part of the seams right now. They're right. completely gone. They defaulted on their bonds. They got no money. Nobody will loan them any more money. They don't have any money to import any energy. So they have no energy and they're gone.
it's important to understand too, like where we're at in the world, right? With this peak centralization, central planning. Right. I like to say central planning always fails, and uh, because they don't have enough data, they know they don't have enough data. You can't organize billions of people, right? But they're trying to, and so central planning is World Economic Forum, World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, Fauci, Fauci, yeah, World Meteorological Association, and then yeah, the UN, the IMF, the BIS, Bank of International Settlements. So nobody knows what the BIS is, and the BIS, it's a central bank, central bank, the central bank of central banks, exactly. And the way I see the world on the org chart, the BIS sits at the top. Below the BIS, then you have some of these think tanks, so the World Economic Forum, the Club of Rome, and so they're the policy makers, and then they push it down to the next row in the org chart to the policy enforcers, which are the governments. And so the governments sit a few levels down. So it's really a coup of the bankers. And they use this banker, the BIS at the top, to push these ideas through the think tanks and then down to the poly forces. And then we're down at the bottom of the subjects of all that, right? So Klaus is kind of running this. Um, he's sitting on top of the world, hobnobbing with all these people, flying their private jets over to Davos, telling us that we need to cut back on our energy, telling us that we need to eat the bugs. This is on their website. They're talking about why we should be eating bugs or more sustainable. Yeah, I've, I've... Nicole Kidman, she made a commercial, I think two weeks ago, of her actually eating bugs. That's what they're putting on TV now. The food is their first attack vector. So I was on Fox Business two weeks ago. They asked me about an article the UN put out when the UN titled the article, Why It's Good to Be Hungry. Why being hungry is good. And they were saying, we need people to be starving because there's all these jobs that have to be done that nobody would do unless they were starving. Who said that? It was an article on the UN website. Wow. Like I said, Fox had me on to talk about it. They took it down after half a day because the backlash was so insane. But per the UN, about 868 million people could starve to death in the next 24 months, almost a billion. So Marxism, whenever Marxism has been tried in Russia in the early 1900s, about 25 million people starved to death. In Mao's Great Leap Forward, about 50 million people starved to death. Those were horrific, 50 million people. And they killed them too. We're talking about almost a billion now. And so at a time when we have almost a billion people that could be starving to death, shouldn't we be trying to get as much food as possible out? We would try to do everything we can. But in Holland, they've gone and shut down the farms. They're trying to take over their land and they want to take over the farms and stop them from growing not just food, but also raising cattle and meat. It's massive protests are happening in Holland at a time where we need more food. In the United States, the farmers are being paid not to plant. They're not allowed to plant on some of their land. And they went and they petitioned the Secretary of Agriculture and said, hey, let us plant. We can get more food. And they said, no, it's not in line with our agreement for the Paris Accord. Environmental thing. Which is the environmental thing, which is what President Trump had pulled us out of. And then Biden's very first day in office, the most important thing he had to do by executive order was put us back into the Paris Accord. So we can't grow food in the United States because of, you know, climate change. Holland can't grow food. And now the protests are happening all over the world. And it's even bigger. So like all throughout Europe, there's an energy crisis going on. Everybody should know that by now. And they don't have natural gas. They're dependent on Russia for natural gas. But we need natural gas in Europe to make fertilizer. And we need fertilizer to grow food. We also need natural gas to process food. What are the three things that kitchen service? So the yeah, so food, points. and then the next one is the energy. And the next one is? And then the money. Right, and that's what Rickers is talking about. CBDC, yeah. Central Bank Digital Currency. For the greater good. I mean, Putin's saying that Americans must sacrifice and must suffer because we have to defeat Russia. It's for the greater good. But the Achilles heel is that third one, which is the money the supply. The money, and that's the big one. In the Communist Manifesto, he had 10 points. Number five was the creation of a central bank. Right. So central banks are part of Marxism. Of course. That's the whole goal. Yeah. <laughs> the central bank is communism, mm -hmm. the central controlled economy. American system, well, not, not Americans, but most people are completely uninformed. When communism was defeated in the 70s and really started in about the 60s, it kind of went underground and it came into the universities in the United States. And so they've done a really good job playing this long game and they started with changing the college age kids' viewpoints on these things who have now moved into media, who have now moved into government, who have and now this moved is into going finance. And this goes back to what, the 60s? The 60s, yeah. yeah. Because in the 60s, I remember Columbia first time rioting. I'm going, why are they rioting? You know what I mean? But it was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. It was against the Vietnam War. And then when I came back from Vietnam, I got hit with eggs and spit on and called baby killer. It was college kids. It's not improved. Now we have TikTok. And TikTok is scrambling. It's turning their brains into scrambled eggs. It is. It's bad. And it's a Chinese organization. The one thing that we have to our advantage is their ideas don't work. Left to their own, they fail. That's a, that's a very good point. So Nietzsche says, that which is falling, shall ye also push. And so it's already fallen. The system's crumbling. The financial system is done. Like the EU is on the verge of breaking up. The bond problem that they have is one that they probably can't solve over there. The pigs nations down below, they're done. Germany has lost its position. The energy is too high. So the EU is on the verge of breaking Who up. Who are the pigs? The Portugal, Italy, Greece, Spain. So the southern nations in the European Union. You know, Italy and Greece have to constantly be bailed out. They don't have any production. Germany has been the production engine of Europe, but now they've become a net importer because of the, the energy prices have gone so high that they can't afford to produce anymore and they have to import their energy. But why do they have to import their energy? Well, they shut all their nuclear reactors off. Well, over the last decade, they've been shutting them down. And so their energy prices have gone up by eight times when next door of France, they still have cheap power because they still have nuclear. So in Europe, they have massive amounts of shale gas like we do in the United States, but they don't want to get it out. 
humans can take a lot of abuse from governments, but when you can't eat or feed your family, that's when it's like game on, right? Nine meals to anarchy, they say. You don't eat for nine <laughs> meals, it's on, right? Or three for me. <laughs> <laughs> what they've been doing is they've been taking to the streets, sort of like we saw in Canada with the truckers, but now it's the farmers with their tractors. And they're taking these tractors and they're making the Canadian truckers look like child play. I mean, they are out in serious droves. Some of the farmers got arrested. The farmers went to the police station, surrounded them and made them release the farmers. They've been filling up the city with manure. They, they blocked block the airports. The fishermen have gotten involved. Now the fishermen are blocking the ports. I even saw the farmers broke into the military base and started dragging jets out of the military and putting them on the roads to block. <laughs> Good for them. But now it's spread Poland. It's spread to Germany. That's All the so farmers are uniting in protest. So it's backing up. It was like the drain got clogged and now it's backing up on Klaus Schwab and buddies. Yeah. yeah. And so now they're like, well, if we can't grow food, then no food. So you get no food then. And uh, the shelves are bare. So I personally believe we're at a war right now. Without freedom of payments, without freedom of money, there is no freedom at all. So we're guaranteed a freedom of speech, but if I don't have money to buy a phone or go on the internet or print a pamphlet or build a website, I have no freedom of speech. And if I have freedom of assembly, but I can't pay to put gas in my truck to drive to the assembly, I have no freedom of assembly either. It means what it sounds like, so you'll own nothing to be happy. So what they think, what Marxism thinks is that um, if we could take away your private property, you could just have everything, like live in a commune, like communism, and we could take away human desire to strive and to have more, because that's what poisons us. This this capitalist system that makes me want to work and achieve more and Which have is more human order. nature, right? Human nature. If we can take that away, people would be happy because right now we're unhappy because we don't have what we want. We're always striving. We always have to work harder. And so if we could take that away, <laughs> but that's what they think. So you'll own nothing and you'll be happy because you won't need to strive. You won't see anybody else having something that you don't have. And they think there's this utopia, but they don't understand there's human nature to your point. What I'm asking you, is it intent or is it a mistake? The real struggle, the real axis of struggles between the individual and the collectivist. It keeps trying to pull them into these groups and take away their individual identity. Command and control, this is communism. It's called free market capitalism, but more important is we're fighting for our freedoms. Like I'm afraid to speak up now. You remember during COVID, they were censoring doctors, you couldn't say anything. It's tragic what's happening. Yeah. So we fight for our freedoms more than anything else, not for capitalism. You wanna be a Marxist, be a Marxist. You wanna be a tranny, have a good life. Who you sleep with, none of my business, but don't take my freedom away.